Hello and welcome back to my workshop. Um, now I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable doing these videos. I have a few more pieces I'd like to show you. Um, these are very special pieces to me because they indicate a slight change of direction for me. Um, they're very um, large theatrical pieces of jewellery, effectively sculpture to wear. And um, if you do wear them, yeah, you're certainly going to going to be noticed. Now, the first piece I'll show you is a bar now. Um, I've actually got a lens I'm going to put onto the, the camera so that you can have a closer look in a moment. But for the time being, yeah, there you go. Um, it's a large piece of jewellery. This is um, around 25 grams of silver, and that's solid silver with a hallmark on it um, to prove that it is as such. Um, a hallmark is something we have in England. Basically, once you've finished a piece of jewellery, if it's heavy enough, you send it to somewhere called the assay office, uh, where the gold or silver is tested um, to ascertain its purity and then it's given a stamp to prove that it's either sterling silver or 18 karat gold or platinum etc etc. So the owl, as I said, sterling silver. Barn owls are quite remarkable creatures. Um, they've got I think the widest distribution of any bird, meaning in various subspecies you get them all the way across Asia, Africa, Europe and even in North America. And they've even started showing up in some city centres. Um, I know that you've got some in New York now, and uh, I know in Rome and a couple other cities in Italy, they've also started making an appearance. Now, barn owls have also got about the best hearing of virtually any creature. Um, these kind of scoop-shaped feathers around their faces can be uh, moved to create a sound-gathering dish so that as they're flying along, they can hear all the mice and voles walking around in the undergrowth beneath them. They've also got quite remarkable eyesight. Um, their eyes are so large, they're fixed in their sockets. So when you see an owl turning his head virtually all the way around, that's because he can't move his eyes from side to side. But the eyes themselves are made of um, six millimetre wide cabochon garnets. And um, garnets have got associations with being able to see in the dark. In fact, in some translations of the Bible, Noah actually uses a, a lantern made of garnets to um, guide the ark through the darkness. Um, these particular garnets are from um, northwest India. Um, they've got that lovely claret red that you uh, that you see in the, the sort of good quality Victorian garnet jeweler. I put a jeweler's loop onto a camera so that I can move the owl onto it and give you a, a better close-up look at it. So there you are, there's uh, there's the owl, as I say, it's um, about 25 grams of solid silver. You can see the garnet eyes and if I move it round you can see that the garnets have been set with claws rather than just being glued in so they're not going to drop out. And at the top here I'm hoping I can zoom in to show you the hallmark. So that's that's the proof, independent proof that this is made of um, of solid silver. Um, if I hold a ruler up to it, I'll try and get it close to the uh, the number ten, so you can see there you go. It's um, just under three three centimeters, and uh, I'll turn that over two inches. Uh, there you go, just a. Uh, just about an inch and a quarter high. While I've got the um, the lens on the camera, I shall take this fox off from around my neck and uh, give you a closer look at that. Now there we go. Like the owl, that's been um, that's been cast in solid sterling silver. Um, it's also been given that antique finish to um, to sharp the details of it, um, and then it's been lacquered to make sure that antiquing doesn't rub off. The hallmark on this is just under the under the bottom of its face there, again showing you it's um, solid silver. And um, the eyes on this one are citrines. Now um, citrine is an interesting stone, you might know it as um, Spanish topaz or uh, money stone it's sometimes called. It's actually a type of amethyst. Um, sometimes amethyst naturally gets heat treated by just geothermal activity within the earth um, which gives it this yellow colour um, or some gemstone dealers if they're skilled enough can actually heat the amethyst up to uh, to turn it this lovely yellow citrine colour so there's the fox I also wanted to show you the chain now I ordinarily don't like to dictate what chains people should buy but 
because the fox is attached to the chain by its ears, I didn't have a choice but to <laughs> but to sell this attached to a chain. And this link is particularly useful um, because it's got a few large sections. What you can do, and I'm going to take away the lens to show you this. So what you can do is, depending on how long you'd like to wear the fox, you can just get the chain and pop this heavyweight lobster claw through one of the larger links so that you can wear it at any, any length you like. So there you have it, the owls and the foxes, and uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing them. If you'd like to have a better look, they're in my online shop, which you can find at either adrianashley.com or I've also got an Etsy shop, which you'll find at argentaqua.com. So um, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.